Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back today. And if you're new here and visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. I do lots of DIYs, trash to treasure, furniture flips with my husband Chris, and thrifting adventures to fit into the farmhouse decor. So it is Sunday Fun Day. So Sunday Fun Day is where I co-host with Yanni and Diane from Decor Easy. If you like farmhouse decor, you will just absolutely love Yanni and Diane's channel. They just do some wonderful farmhouse decor, super talented at putting a vignette together and they are from the Netherlands so it's just nice to see what they find different than what I find here in the States. So we put on a playlist that you can add anything to as a thrifter and a flipper of thrifted items. That is usually what I do but you know that doesn't mean that's what everybody does. Some people like to do decorations, some people like to show their thrift hauls, some people might have a cute DIY or a vignette that they had decorated. So on the last Sunday of the month I co-host this with Yanni and Diana and we can just do whatever you know kind of just want to show our viewers what we are all about. So this playlist is just a collaboration of what fellow YouTubers and what they like to create. So in my video, this is the end of the month is when I leave it for my two thrift hauls that I do throughout the month and this is where I show all my flipped items because it's quite a process to get that many items painted and fixed and all cleaned up and get, in, get them ready to resell for a retail booth. And then this will be the only video that I will add prices to. Um, I know I've touched base on some of my other videos, but if you're new here, I had an out of town business by my booth out two weeks in a row. So I'm not really sure. I was, as it is a compliment, it just made a lot of work for me and my husband, Chris. So we're just only going to add prices to when I do this, because I know this, that this helps other resellers um, help price their um, items what you know anyway I, there's no rhyme and reason every area you can price differently and I am in a rural town so my items just get priced a little bit differently than the business that came that's in a much bigger area but anyway so this is Sunday fun day and I hope that you stay and watch the whole playlist so I didn't show these in a thrift haul but I picked up the four of these for 309 for the all four then I also picked up this medallion-like flower resin piece for $4.09. And I love these little, you know, these medallion, you know, wall decor. And these are also resin. And then we have these reproduction tins with these pictures on it. And, you know, I start off with, you know, I had the wall decor and now I'm going to my metal pieces, you know. So this is just some of the stuff that I am going to be making over to resell. And um, this is just easier for me if I separate it out all by pieces. I look at, I just still love that bird <laughs> mirror. And, you know, it helps me, you know, figure out how to organize with all these you know what I'm gonna do with each piece and how I'm gonna tackle it to get it painted and you know the you know separate from the wood from the resin or what would look best being sprayed or not being sprayed and what needs to be taken apart and what needs to be you know taking the greenery out of I mean when you're you know doing a mass grouping like this it's just nice to have you know set it all out get a game plan of what you want to do to each item what and for me what will be staying white and what will be you know black and then what will be antiqued you know so every time I do one of these hauls you know I, I'm just kind of figuring out in my mind how I want to tackle um, it's, it's nice to have this many tables to really tackle these kind of projects 
So first things first, I'm going to remove, be removing any price tickers and any other tags that I don't really think belong. Nothing says a thrifted flipped item like you painting over a tag. I mean, unless it's a number saying that this is made so many of an, an item, but usually, you know, I'm buying, I'm not buying antique vintage. I'm just buying to paint. And I am going to be discarding of this greenery. It's not really greenery that I, you know, I'm not fond of. I just want to paint the boxes and I really should have done that over the trash. So, you know, oops, I thought it was going to come out in one big chunk, but that, you know, that gr green, you know, fluorofoam, it does get brittle. So for this set of three boxes, I just want the little drawers. So it must have had some plants in it, some herbs in it. So I am going to be taking out this plastic and then taking this apart. So I just have the three drawers. And now that's some type of a hot glue. Um, I'm really going to have to work at getting that off. But I do have a game plan for these. And I don't really have a plan for this kind of chalkboardy thing. As you see, you know, I can just pull it apart. Um, the back really isn't very nice on it. And so now I'm just going back with, you know, these snips to get any of those nails out of this because I really just want the boxes. And then for any hardware, I like to take the hardware off and I like to clean it. And then I like to paint it separately. I, I'm not really a fan of painting it unless you can't like get it the piece off. Um, I just like it that to have that clean line and paint things separately. And then along with these candlesticks, you know, they always, you know, a lot of them have these rings in there. And yes, they're not the easiest things to get out because you really don't want them always to come out. But um, I like to pop them out. And then I have been actually spray painted. I used to throw them away, but now I put them back in all spray painted black. And I really like that look. And then like on this box where it has the hinges, I will take the hinges off and paint them separately also. So well, here's my sticker removing pile, which is not very glamorous. And then my container of my hardware that I'm going to be cleaning and painting separately. And as, as you see, I removed the mirror off of that mirror and then set that to the side. And now I kind of have everything assessed of what I want to do with it. Like I said, getting your game plan is very too, you know, when you're doing a big round robin paint job like this, it's just easier to have a game plan of how you're going to be painting everything. So I thought since I was already going to be soaking this hardware in some Dawn dish soap, I just soak it with extremely hot water, you know, and let it do what Dawn does and gets, you know, it's great degreaser. And I'm just going to do a bucket of soapy Dawn dish soap to wipe my items off. Yes, we usually use crud cutter, but I thought maybe I'd show a little bit of option. If you can't find crud cutter or you don't have crud cutter, you know, Dawn dish soap is a great degreaser. So now for the items that I am going to spray, I have taken a table outside. It's a nice day. We don't have our spray area quite completely set up in the new pole barn workshop yet. So I am just using the Rust-Oleum paint and primer in one in flat black. And some of these wooden items, I just really wanted that smooth finish. And you know, the spraying will give that smooth finish so that, and then I think spray paint sticks better to the metal and then to any kind of resin pieces. And so it's nice when it is still sunny and we're still warm that it helps dry this really fast. So now while that is drying, I go back into the workshop and I have a few pieces that I need to sand. So this, um, this picture I'm going to be making into one of my farmhouse signs. So, but I did not realize that that heart at the bottom was actually metal. So a lot of times on the, you know, I always take thrifted signs and I make new signs out of them, you know, to resell and if you think that that is not raised even though you don't feel that it is bumpy I will tell you as soon as you start to paint it and especially if you're going to distress it yes you will feel that they, it is just slightly raised enough just like how I distress items and I love to see those details these are the details I don't want to see on a sign that I'm repurposing and on these next couple pieces that I'm going to be sanding, like this red box, yep, it's just that type of wood from Hobby Lobby. 
you know and you know the nice thing about that is when I go to paint it it just that black paint will soak right in but I really want to get as much of this red off that I can so when I go to distress it that much of that red is showing through especially when I want to distress those edges and then there's just the rough texture that this kind of wood um, has and I like my it to be a little bit smoother and then for these reproduction tins, I know I'm probably making somebody sad that I'm sanding off the picture in the middle, but it is literally just a piece of paper and I sell tins all the time, just painted plain white and distressed. And like I said, they, they sell really well, unfortunately, without the picture on them. So now for my wooden pieces, I know that I cleaned the metal with the Dawn dish soap. It just, a, you know, it's just a different way to clean the metal because usually I am used to washing the metal in the sink with the Dawn dish soap but here I'm using the crud cutter for my wooden items that I'm going to be hand painting and the crud cutter is the same thing like the Dawn it's a great degreaser but I don't really want to use a bucket of water on wooden items and I don't want that wetness to soak in and I'm showing you here that these hinges do are not removable they're probably just one of those that you put on and then you hammer in they have little sharp spikes that hammer in now I'm back outside on the, using some polycrylic and on the black items that I have sprayed. And then the polycrylic is a just a great seal coat. Um, I absolutely love this. So for the items that are going to be stained black, it's their final top coat. And then for the items that I'm going to be painting over white, it just seals that black paint in. So when I go to distress it, that it really just stays on and adheres to it. And it's just great to seal in on that metal. And then after that polycrylic dries, I can, the items that I want to make white, I do give them at least one good coat of the white Rust-Oleum paint and primer in flat white. And that just helps give a nice base for me finish the, finishing them up with the Kills paint that I love. So all of my wooden items are going to be painted with this paint ready to use black onyx that I get off Walmart I kid you not it's $13 a gallon and I absolutely love how it adheres to wood items so some of these items will be stained black and some of them will be overcoated in white but I'm going to give everybody at least two coats and then if it's they're like their final color they might get a third coat just to make sure that I don't see any of that wood through it so here's what the black items look like why I am working on it and then I did have two items that I needed to tape off because they had some wording that I did not want to cover up and then I can't wait to see how this little house turns out but I couldn't really get tape in on that wire so I had to take a painter's brush you know small little painter's brush and get into that area very gingerly not trying to touch the wire. You know, and even in the middle of thinking this is how I'm going to do something, when I got, got to this swan and then I forgot that I had two clocks that, you know, to give that smooth finish, spray paint just really does that. I cannot wait to have a nice sprayer so we could do this and stop having to use cans of spray paint. But I just wanted this beautiful swan to get the paint job that it deserved. And so the Rust-Oleum paint and primer would definitely leave a nice smooth paint job on this along with these two beautiful clocks. And then I do have some items that I am going to be painting over the black and I absolutely love this Kills paint and primer and they're flat white. Same thing like the black, you just go to Walmart, pick it off the shelf, it's 20 bucks a gallon, you cannot beat that. Um, the spray paint is just a nice base, nice adhering when I want a smooth finish, but I really like my Kills white. I, yep, there's a difference in white paint. And then I did go back in and actually take this Lazy Susan apart just to get a better paint job. And I know for you that love the primitive colors, you're probably sad that I'm painting over this mustardy yellow, but I can tell you I'm already absolutely loving how this little house is turning out. You know, painting the interior of those windows and the interior of those stars black and the, oh my gosh, I'm already loving this little house. 
so now for the pieces that I have sprayed and I have put a couple coats of the Kills White, I am taking some 220 sandpaper and then going through and de-stressing all of these pieces. I, you know, I just love how painting something white and all those details, oh my goodness, I just love how once I start to distress it and some of that black shows through, and yes, some of the natural will show through, um, I just absolutely love it. Just love how all the details pop out. Yes, they're all gross and yucky because I don't want to have some wet paint, so I don't want to use the air compressor to blow these off quite yet, but I absolutely love how they already distressed. So now for the items that are going to stay black. I need to seal that paint in before distressing them. So I'm using the Polycrylic in Clear Matte. This is just a nice top coat. It seals that paint in and it a little bit goes a long way. It sprays on very nice and is pretty self-leveling, I would have to say, but I do absolutely love a Polycrylic. So I do have a few items in this grouping that are getting white painted over the black. So that's what I'm just showing you a little bit of what I, you know, sometimes you forget to video like, oh, I needed to video that. So I'm just showing you the back side of what I am doing here. Now for the items that I have spray painted and then I sprayed with polycrylic to seal that paint in, they are good and dry now. So I'm using a 150 sandpaper. That polycrylic is a really nice top coat, so it takes a little bit stronger of a sandpaper to get through to get to that natural wood. And so I'm just taking the 150 on the sharp edges of this cute little tiered tray and all these other pieces. And then I will be still wooling the rest of the piece just to take that shine off. Even though it's a clear matte, there's still like a shine that's on it. And plus that opens it up for the waxing I will be doing later. So here's a little bit closer look on this candlestick. So how that 150 gets through that polycrylic and that paint and goes down to the natural and just gives this such a nice distressed aged look. So I know I did not show you what I taped off. So on this little dairy box here, I had tried to make a perfect square and tape that off so that I still wanted to leave that red wording, but I wanted black on the outside. And I know you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, that's white, red, and black. But just wait, there's a plan for it. So now for the items that I spray painted black and then I polycrylic and then I've distressed, I'm using this Waverly Antiquing Wax. I just absolutely love how it just makes that wood that shows through just a nice rich walnuty color and just what the aged look it gives to that black. I just absolutely love it. So now if you're a little bit unsure about that white and red and the black, just wait till you see this antiqued. I know that it I knew that it was going to grab on. I absolutely love this antiquing wax for this reason. And then I also had this beautiful tray that I and it was just I love the age of that tin. I loved everything about it. I did sand this down and now I'm just freshening up that woods with some of that um, Waverly antiquing wax also. I just absolutely loved this piece. And now I'm going to be stenciling on these boxes and but I want to just you know that's just that there's some particle board in there and then it's really rough for me taking away that plastic and having to scrape off that glue and so just to take these up a notch I'm just taking this way really wax inside this box and I did have an uh-oh moment at this point when I wax the entire box and I just really meant to do um, the inside of the box but that's a that's for later on so for areas when I tape off I there's always that hard where the paint has dried and you know that's what you want you don't want it to go underneath the tape so I'm I always take a piece of sandpaper and Chris is doing this for right now helping me out you know it's a it, this is a team effort at all times and so that just helps take that sharp edge of that paint build up for where the tape was and you know I care as much about the back of a piece as I do the front and as I'm replacing the clock faces back into the clocks I just love how clean that this is I love how you know I'll, sometimes you do see the back of your item so it's just nice to have that clean look that's why I always say if you can take anything apart and paint it separately you should 
Now these are the pieces that I'm going to be hand distressing. These are the ones that I painted black by hand and then I painted white by hand and now I'm going in and distressing them. So I'm just using a 220 sandpaper and just, you know, letting it press hard against the edges, the sharp edges are the places I wanted to distress to show a little bit of that black that I painted and some of that natural wood just to give it that nice distressed look. And then just running my hand lightly over the entire piece to make the piece nice and smooth. So on this box, I did the same thing as I did to that dairy. This had, this was a homemade box. Somebody made it for somebody and it had a date on it. So I thought I am going to try to save this. Um, just. You know, it's the bottom of the box and it's just nice to save stuff like that. And then the same thing with this box where I remove the tape, I will take the sandpaper along those sharp edges where that paint build up and left it nice and hard. I don't want that hard feeling, so I will be sanding it in to make it soft. And now for the rest of these pieces that, you know, those are the ones that I painted and I painted them black and I painted them white. So now I'm going to seal that paint in with some Varathane finishing wax. You know, this is a nice wax. So you just wipe it on and wipe it off and then let it dry. And then I will start putting these pieces back together, putting these wrought iron corbels back on their pieces of wood. And then replacing the metal rings inside these candlesticks and um, the, it's a nice tight fit. So what I needed to do, because um, I was not able to push them in by hand, is I just put a towel on it and then grab the rubber mat, mallet. You definitely don't want to use metal on metal or just try to hammer it without, because remember you just painted your metal. So all that would make it do would be chipping. So that's why I used the rubber hammer and then a towel over it so I didn't chip my paint. So before painting the back of this arrow white, um, we removed this double hanger. You know, I know sometimes that's your only option, but I absolutely, I don't know about you, when you're hanging decor at your house, I hate trying to get two, you know, screws in the wall and perfectly level. So if I can replace it with just a one hanger, that's what I will do. So now this is the grouping of items that I want to put stenciling on, some wording on. So I will be, uh, first I have to assess my oops of I put stain on the area where I needed to stencil. Um, you know, the wax will not, if you try to stencil over wax, it will just peel off. So just take some rubbing alcohol in a cotton ball and then you will know when you've got it off because it'll be smooth at first it'll kind of start grabbing the cotton and so i just do this a couple times and then after it dries i then take sandpaper to it and then you can stencil away and then to get my measurement i need to just kind of place that handle back on to you know I couldn't remember that I wasn't supposed to wax. I don't want to remember. I don't want to forget that there's a handle and put it too big, put the stencil too big. So that's where I'm just doing that to do this garden herb on it. Then for the garden herb, I just use this font. I absolutely hate saying font names, so I'm not even going to try it, but this is what it is. Then for the box that had the little cute handle on it, I am just using one of the images off of the Cricut Design Store, this Be Kind. And then for these two pictures, I am flipping right back over to my Cameo Silhouette, and I am going to be doing this market and this flower for their designs on the front of them. And then I'm using this welcome on the silhouette also, only because I really haven't taken the time to learn how to do the larger images on the Cricut yet. So here they all are, all with their vinyl, all measured with some extra masking tape to make sure that I'm centered. And then I am using the apple barrel in black and the apple barrel multi-use in white. And then you see as these pictures I have measured, I knew where I was going to be centered. And you know, when it comes to small little lettering and little details like that, sometimes I, you know, I just give up after I've cut a couple times and it just, I can't weed it. Um, I don't know why it does that sometimes, but you know what, that's the part of the perfectly imperfect of distressed, it's okay. So for the metal, 
pictures, I need to seal that stencil in before removing the vinyl. So I usually, I've had this container of the crystal clear acrylic coating and so that's just what I'm using. And then sorry I had to show you that when removing vinyl off of a metal you definitely want to heat it up with a blow dryer so you do not pull off any of that paint. And yeah unfortunately I do just put it between my legs and hold that round object. And actually I use the blow dryer to remove all the vinyl off of all the pieces. And so now here on the black that I have painted white the stenciling letter I am going to now antique the entire pieces and I just love how it gives this it's such an aged look. So now to finish these pieces up I'm just going to give them a nice finished coat with a very thin finishing wax to leave them nice and smooth. So on this little box that I am flipping, I decided it would look super cute with some grain sack stripes. I know you're all surprised that I was doing some grain sack stripes on this little box. So I just found center and then I'm doing two sets on each side of the box. So just using the regular masking tape as my guide after I found center of the box then found center of for the first stripe that I'm placing. And then I'm using the Apple Barrel multi-use paint and a sponge, makeup sponge from the dollar store to apply it using the dabbing technique. And then I'm not going all the way down on the back because it just that's where the hinges are. And then using two pieces of masking tape to overlap to make a little bit of a probably a quarter inch gap so that I have that's where paint will be and then making another little line on the side using another piece of masking tape and then blocking off what I don't want to be painted and then of course I'm helping it along with a blow dryer to dry and then a blow dryer to help remove that paint or that tape so it doesn't stick and pull that previous paint off. I thought I would just throw in some of these tins that I had and some rusted stars and use up some of the baby grass that I try to buy when it's on sale at Hobby Lobby. I absolutely love baby grass for fall. I love that it has that aged look and I love these tins other than cleaning them up and taking their stickers off. I didn't really have to do anything to them so what I do is I put the Dollar Tree foam in the bottom. I glue it to that because of it being a tin and then I put a little bit of dab of glue on the baby grass and stick it into the foam and then I just finish them up with some uh, jute from the dollar store and then these rusted tins that I had thrifted and then I had saved off something just to complete this little bit of greenery to add to somebody's decor. So I always love doing stenciled items. I just think that attracts, you know, people into my booth. I know that not everybody is blessed to have a Cricut or a Silhouette, and I know that I am blessed to actually have both, but I do know that, you know, people can hand, you know, stencil just probably as well as what these machines are, but me, I cannot. And I love how these sprayed items turned out. I love how that Rust-Oleum, the flat paint, I just love the color of that black. And I love sealing these in with that polycrylic just to know that they have a nice durable finish. And I just really love that wall decor. I love how, you know, you really couldn't see the flower before, but I absolutely love how it distressed and that flower just pops. So would you have passed up on these ceiling tiles? They may not have looked very high end, that they were framed. You know, I, I thought it was a great price for the whole grouping for $309. And I could just see what they could be and I knew that they would distress beautifully. And I love when I run across these you know these ceiling tile like reproductions and these resin flowers and i always never pass up a metal cross i just know that when i paint them and you know that undercoat of black how it just shows through on that white paint and just shows all those details that are hidden in the other color and i love giving that little moonshine bottle and that little milk bottle a little bit of the ginger chick color to just give it an updated look so I really love that I was able to take that clock apart, just giving that crisp lines, just gave that nice primitive clock just a great look. 
And then on this swan, I definitely thought that I was going to be painting her white, but I absolutely loved it in black once I got it. So I just left it alone and sealed it in. And I, I have other little lanterns like that that are white, so I thought, why not try one in black? I absolutely love how these corbels turned out. And I wasn't really sure about having that two-tiered tray in a all black, but I do absolutely love how it turned out. The Waverly Antiquing Wax just took it up a notch, and I took a viewer suggestion from my thrift haul and left those glass that um, were in great shape and those candlesticks and I am happy to say that both both of these clocks did work and I don't have to buy them mechanisms and I absolutely loved how this one turned out and I just love how that tray just changing it black just updated it and as for painting things black and white, I can't tell you that the white sells any faster than the black or the black sells any faster than the white. They all sell just the same. So I just kind of go back and forth. You know, I did a couple Lazy Susans that were black, so this time I'll do some that is white. And I have two tall candlesticks that are white, so I thought maybe a grouping of three. And that's just how I decide. And I have done many of candlesticks like this, but all in white, so I was glad that I tried this set in black, and I absolutely love it. I absolutely love that tray with that aged metal behind it, and then this double recipe box. Even though I was kind of on the fence if I should have just painted over that and put on my own wording of recipe, but you know the thing about paint, you can always repaint it if it doesn't sell. So I always like to have some kind of greenery in my booth. So these tins were just perfect. It's kind of a transition time from the bright greenery of summer to, you know, the muted colors of fall. But I absolutely love this baby grass and I love putting it in these little tins. And I absolutely um, love that little cheese box too. That's one that's been in my booth. It never really sold. One sold separately. So I thought why not just make that an arrangement and that cute little box looks like a cute soup case and you know i saved my favorite piece for last even though the swan was my close second i absolutely love this primitive house i know that some people probably like the mustard but i absolutely loved how this house turned out with the white and the black and how it distressed and i used the waverly wax on its cute little roof and then on those chickens you know that wasn't part of my haul but they were something that had been in my booth and i do think that they are unique so they didn't sell as white so why not try them in black and yes the light in this little house worked i was very happy about that so i thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think of my thrifted flips i know we this collection seemed to have a little bit more black in it but um, it's just what an item when we get painting it, it just what, it just looks good at that color, then we just leave it alone, or maybe I decided before, you know, an item kind of lets me know what it, color it should be. I know that it's only black and white, but like I said in the video, my black sells just as much as my white, and my white sells just as much as my black. They're very neutral colors. And just because I paint black and white, that doesn't mean that others can't play paint in other colors there's a world of colors out there so don't forget to go down in my description box and click on yanni and diane's channel decor easy and check out what they did along with the playlist talented youtube creators and what they put on in this playlist so if you wanted to see i forgot to show my shirt my ginger chick rehab shirt and our star when i did my cricket video and then the perfectly imperfect underneath is on the back if you want to check out my Cricut video. And this is just how I seem to always get to um, do an opening and closing is with a cat on my lap. And this is Rascal, which is Squirt's brother. And it's just like as soon as you sit down, they're happy as a lark to find a lap to get cuddled on. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you're part of my YouTube family that has helped me grow, and just watching our videos helps our channel grow and lets YouTube know that you like our kind of content. So thank you. And if you're new to my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thanks so much. Bye.